up, movie crew. Today is March 1st, meaning I'm going to show everyone what I watched during the month of February. I am going to start off first before I show everything. If you are new to this channel, hit that subscribe button. We talk movies, we talk physical media, talk some TV shows here and there. I do rankings, I do reviews, I buy movies, pretty much anything movie related. Now, I'm going to show off everything I watched during February. For a short month, I managed to watch quite a bit of stuff. So let's get into this. First two things I'm going to show off. If you are not subscribed, check out Mid-Level Media. He mentioned that this month is Buddy Cop Month. Well, month of February is Buddy Cop Month. I watched a few things, but long story short, I had such a huge watch list that I didn't get to a lot. So I'm going to show off what I watched. We got two guns. And the Men in Black Trilogy. Yes, there's only three. We are not going to talk about the fourth movie. With the Men in Black movies, got to say the first one's still the best. Second one, I enjoyed even though I know a lot of people didn't. The third movie, every time I watch it, I fall asleep. We're just going to leave it at that. Alright, so now I'm going to show off... All of my non-buddy cop movies that I watched during the month of February. One of my big lots finds, Haunted House. This movie is stupid, but I managed to get a couple of laughs in the movie. It wasn't a long movie. It didn't overstay its welcome. Overall, fun watch. Lamb. I did an unboxing for this a while back. I will have a pinned comment down below for anyone that would like to see my unboxing video for Lamb. This movie's weird. I mean, this, that can be said for a lot of A24 movies, but this is a weird movie. And the ending is also weird. I do want to give everyone a heads up to anyone that is planning on buying this from the A24 website. Watch the movie before you look at the art book. The art book spoils the movie. Carlito's Way. For those that don't know, I am going to be recording my complete 4K collection later on. And since I pulled this out, I was like, you know what? I gotta watch this again. This movie is great. I highly recommend anyone that has not seen this movie to watch it. The Punisher. Got the steel book not too long ago. Finally sat down and watched it. I still like this movie. I know that most people prefer the John Bernthal TV series that was on Netflix. It's moving to, I think, Disney Plus or Hulu once all the rights issues are cleared up. The older episodes that have been canceled, by the way. But I still enjoy this. I really like this movie, and I also got to say shout out to Lionsgate for the amazing steelbook. Next up, we've got The Florida Project. I bought this recently from an Amazon buy two get one sale. Since the other two titles I picked up were A24, I thought I'd go ahead and pick this one up as well and just make my entire haul A24. This is a really good movie. There's a couple of parts where I kind of want to question the morality of some of the people in the movie, but it is still a good movie. The Black Coat's Daughter. I got this a while back because my local FYE was closing down and I was able to get it for a really cheap price. I finally had time to sit down and watch it. This is a really good movie. 
and it has a bit of a twist to it. So I highly recommend checking this out if you get a chance. Eighth grade, another movie I picked up when my local FYE closed down. I do want to say this is a good movie, but I am definitely not the target audience for this. So it's definitely more for people that are younger than I am. Long story short. Still recommend checking it out if you get a chance. It's still a pretty good movie. It has some good moments. Bad Moms. I had no plans on getting this because with 8th grade, I thought that this was not a movie for me. When I went to Big Lots with a couple of my friends, they told me I had to pick up this movie. I am glad I did. This movie is hilarious. There is so much crap going on in this movie. The first half of it, I'm pretty sure I was laughing nonstop for at least a good 30, 40 minutes in the movie. Every day. All right, so February, one of the big holidays is Valentine's Day. I thought, you know what? Two movies that you will be seeing later that I watched. It's like, you know, I've been watching all these horror films that are based around Valentine's Day. I should watch an actual romance movie. So I picked up one of the cheap movies I bought, I think either from Dollar General or uh, Dollar Tree, one of those places. The acting isn't bad, but the story I thought was a little weird. I felt like there wasn't any real closure to the character A. And it just kind of took me out of the movie a little bit. The score. All right, so this thing has Robert De Niro, Edward Norton, and this is one of the last movies that Marlon Brando did before he passed. This movie is great. I want to point out, I did watch Carlito's Way earlier. I showed that one a minute ago. This would be a good double feature to have with it if you have that type of time on your hands. I did not know what to expect going into seeing this movie. And when I did, there's a lot of twists and turns in the movie. Really, really good. Highly recommend it. And I think I got it for $3 at Big Lots. The Wannabe. I believe I got this one at Dollar Tree. I got it because from executive producer Martin Scorsese. Sometimes I forget that some of these movies just have his name on them. And that he doesn't really have any genuine involvement. They just throw his name on there to try to put some more eyes on the product. It was okay. I can't say it was great. I can't really recommend it. It's, it exists. Horror Express. All right. Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee in a movie together. I picked this up because it was $1.25 at Dollar Tree because my local Dollar Tree stores are now $1.25. And... I have to say, this movie was really good. I did not know what to expect because it wasn't one of the movies that I've heard from, heard of from either of the two actors I just mentioned, but it's pretty solid. I have found out that it does have a Blu-ray release, so I will be upgrading this copy soon. Beyond the Gates. I love my IFC Midnight titles. I got this, I believe, off of Larry and Melissa. I will have their channel down below. I really enjoy this movie. It was a little stupid at points, but for the most part, very much recommend watching this. The last movie I watched for the month of February. Alligator in 4K. 
from Screen Factory. All right, I remember the first time I watched this, I remember thinking it was stupid, but I was entertained. My opinion is still the same. And oddly enough, of all the movies that Shout Factory said, hey, we're gonna give a 4K transfer to, this was one of those movies. The 4K actually looks pretty good for a really cheesy movie. So, definitely recommend checking it out if you wanna check out a cheesy 4K transfer. And shout out to Shout Factory and Scream Factory for putting that on 4K. The Eternals. I now have a new least favorite MCU movie. That's all I'm going to say on it. Um, the fewer things said, the better, because as a comic book fan, I know how Marvel fans can be. I'm going to leave it at that. Patient Zero. This is one of the movies I got at Big Lots not too long ago. It was $3. I love my zombie movies. This isn't quite a zombie movie. It's more like the crazies. But it's really good. And I was definitely surprised because with the actors involved, I thought this was going to be a British movie, and it wasn't. So... I know it got a lot of negative reviews, but I enjoyed it. It's not that long a movie. It's worth checking out. I think it's like an hour and 26 minutes. And it was cool seeing Matt Smith do something where he was the protagonist again. I haven't seen him do a lot of protagonist roles since he left Doctor Who. All right, now to what I really watched on Valentine's Day. Valentine. I watched this movie when it first came out, and I enjoyed it. I know this movie's gotten crapped on before. I like this movie. It had a nice little twist to it. It had some nice little throwbacks. The flashbacks were pretty good. I have nothing bad to say about this movie, other than, like most horror movies, there's definitely some tropes in it. It happens with every horror movie. Let's just be honest. And my bloody Valentine. Not really much I can say about that hasn't already been said. Enjoyable movie. It's kind of cheesy. But that's what you get with a lot of these 80s horror films. A lot of them are just cheesy fun. Gemini Man. I'm going to be honest, when this was first announced, the movie did not look appealing to me. I did not see it in theaters. I didn't really care to see it in theaters. Then my local Dollar General had it for, I want to say $4.95. So I thought, you know what? It's $4.95. I think I had a coupon, so I had to spend a certain amount of money anyway. I was like, all right, you know what? Forget it. I'm just going to go on ahead and buy it. It's not bad, but... I can't really say it's the best movie. If you can find it for a cheap price or you can rent it, go for that. I'm definitely glad I did not spend the full retail price on it. Antlers. Unfortunately, I did spend the full retail price on this one. I thought I was going to like this a lot more than I did, and I didn't. It's got a creepy atmosphere to it, but there's quite a few times in the movie where it lost my attention and it would take like a random scare or a random change of scenery for me to get my attention back on the movie. And I didn't really miss out on much. This movie could have been about 20 minutes shorter and it would have been able to tell the exact same story. Season of the Witch. I have been buying some of these cheesy Nicolas Cage movies for a little bit. And they are what they are. They're cheesy fun. This movie is kind of stupid. But I was able to sit down and watch it for the full hour and a half. Alright, so this one's a little bit of a cheat. I watched the 
This is a four movie set. I watched the first two in January. I watched the last two at the beginning of, the, of February. And that is the Final Destination Collection. I love the premise of these movies, but for whatever reason, they cannot keep the momentum going for the whole movie. So the longest one of these is the first one at an hour and 40 minutes, and the fourth one's the shortest in an hour and 22. None of them can keep the premise going. It's almost like, oh, wait, we've already done everything we can. We need to put some scenes in here because we don't have that much. I really hope the reboot can fix that. Truth or dare. I checked it out because it's Blumhouse. I like my Blumhouse stuff. Cool premise. And movie. This is definitely more of a something for like the teenagers and the college kids to watch. Simple as that. It's not a bad movie, just not something I'm going to be rewatching. Charlie Bartlett, one of the movies I picked up at Dollar Tree. I don't remember if this was before or after the 125 price tag. Either way, I spent less than $2 on the movie. I enjoyed this movie. RIP to Anton Yelchin, gone way too soon. But this movie, you need to watch. If it shows up at Dollar Tree again, you need to go pick it up. Simple as that. And we're on the last stack of movies that I watched during the month of February. Cruel Intentions. Got this one for a dollar at a store near me. Shout out to Tech Exchange. I still enjoy it. It was definitely good. It's not for everyone, though. Simple as that. And Kanto. I know a lot of other YouTubers have been praising this movie and talking about how great it is. Me personally, this is a visually stunning movie. I highly recommend checking it out in 4K if you want to buy this movie. I can't say that I enjoyed this movie as much as everyone else did. I think some of the music scenes kind of, it felt like they were forcing some of the songs to happen. And some of the characters were just, a they felt a little too generic. Not a lot of characters were fleshed out in my opinion. But if you're already considering getting it, you might as well go in and get it because you're going to want to watch it. And keep in mind, a lot of other people that have checked this out have said how much they love the movie. So, me saying it's okay, you don't need to go by that. There's plenty of other people that have praised the movie. The Secret World of Arietti. Another movie that I recently showed off in one of my collection videos, my Studio Ghibli stuff. This is one I hadn't watched yet. It had a short run time and I had a little bit of time to just be able to watch something. So I was able to sit down and watch this. I enjoyed this movie. The Kid with Charlie Chaplin. Again, something I was able to sit down and watch because it's a shorter movie. This movie is an hour and four minutes. Now, before anyone goes, oh, I'm going to watch that since it's a short movie, this is a silent film, so you do need to keep your attention on it at all times. One of the things I did not realize is the kid, in the kid, is the person that eventually became Fester in the original Adams Family TV series. Learn something new every day, right? Motel Hell. I got to say, I enjoyed this movie. I don't know what it is about it, but every time I watch it, I laugh more than I get scared. I think there's probably something wrong with me because I enjoy this movie a little bit more than I probably should. Nettie Professor 1 and 2. 
The first one, I gotta say, doesn't really hold up the way I thought it was going to. It's still got its moments. It's still not a bad movie. The second one, avoid at all costs that movie sucked. First one's not bad, though. Thirteen Ghosts. Again, I know a lot of people kind of don't like this movie. I personally enjoyed it. It had some funny moments. It had some scary moments. It had a really good cast. Definitely recommend checking this out. And finally, Ouija and Ouija Origin of Evil. So Ouija is generic. I guess because of some of the success they had with other movies, it was like, hey, we're going to do one on the Ouija board. It's okay. Origin of Evil, however, while I wasn't scared from watching it, it is a good movie. It is a very solid movie on what leads the ghost in this movie to become possessed. Overall, I highly recommend watching Origin of Evil. Unfortunately, you do need to watch the first one first before you watch the origin story because everything kind of makes sense that way. That is everything I watched for the month of February. But more importantly, what did you watch? And as always, if you are new to this channel, hit that subscribe button. If you like what you see, leave a thumbs up. Comment down below everything you watched during the month of February. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you all for watching and tune in next time.